So at this point in the assembly process, we have the y-axis rails connected to the rail mounts. Uh, if you have the flood coolant kit or the drain kit, uh, those are installed at this point. And we're almost ready to get to the concrete pouring process. But before we can get to that, there's a very important intermediate step that we have to do. And that's what and that's called making the y-axis rails coplanar to each other. So what is coplanarity? Coplanarity is the condition of the y-axis rails laying in the same plane. And so what we want is them to be laying in the same plane. We don't want them to do this, and we don't want them to do this. When the machine is fully assembled, that's gonna be obviously very critical because the coplanarity error limits the accuracy of the flatness that the machine can produce, like produ uh, machining a flat surface. Um, and so when we get the machine commissioned, we wanna make sure we do that to a very precise level. But before uh, we do the concrete pouring, we wanna do a coarse uh, coplanarity error adjustment. And to do that, we're going to need a few items. Uh, from your kit, you'll need the uh, 0.2 millimeter thick Y-axis rail shims, and you'll need the uh, coplanarity check gauge, which I've got resting on the Y-axis rails um, along the diagonal. The way this works is uh, the coplanarity check gauge is a, is a piece of sheet metal. It's laser cut. It's got two uh, points on either end that rest on the floor of the slots that are cut into the Y-axis rail. And then the center point has a, um, a protrusion that the uh, tip of the dial indicator can sense against. And so the, the, the strategy behind this is that you lay it across one diagonal, you zero your indicator, and then you would pick up the indicator, you pick up the check gauge, lay it across the other diagonal, and then you would, you would check what the indicator is measuring. And whatever the indicator is measuring there is the coplanarity error. So to do this uh, measurement, you're also going to need a dial indicator. Um, dial indicators are super important for, for machining in general. So if you haven't picked one up yet, strongly encourage you to get one, not just to do the coplanarity checks, but to do a wide variety of uh, machining inspections and setups and tramming of vices, um, really critical to have a dial indicator. We sell this exact indicator setup. It's a five tenths indicator, has 30 thousandths of uh, range. Um, it's pretty good bang for your buck. Uh, if you don't pick it up from us, there's lots of different op options uh, for you to pick one up, but whether you get it from us or somebody else, strongly recommend you to, to get this. Your user experience is gonna be improved by having one. Um, so with that said, I'm gonna zero the indicator on the protrusion here, so we could take this measurement. And so for this, it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, you know, within a few thousandths of zero is, is the only thing that matters because we're just doing a coarse uh, measurement at this point. Um, the reason that we only need a coarse measurement is because um, the, before we pour the concrete, what we're going to do is install the base plate into the concrete, and that is located using base plate positioning brackets off of the uh, y-axis rails. So if we don't at least do a coarse correction of the, um, of the coplanarity of the y-axis rails, what that'll mean is that the base plate surface will not be exactly parallel to the y-axis rails. And so when we go to do a fine correction of the coplanarity error after the concrete's been poured, that'll yield excessive stock removal required from the base plate to get it to clean up fully. And we wanna you know, preserve the life of the base plate as much as possible. And that requires us to set this up to remove the least amount of material possible from the surface of the base plate. So uh, we're doing a course, correct, uh, course adjustment here, and you know we're just trying to get it within five or ten thousandths, and that, that's good enough for this for now. So I've got the uh, indicator zeroed; it's reading about uh, one thousandth here. So now I'm going to carefully pick up the check gauge, and I'm going to set it across the other diagonal, being careful not to move the indicator. I'm going to carefully pick up the tip and set it on there. Okay, 
So now what we're reading is my, my zero point was here. So we are reading a positive 5, 10, 15, looks like about um, 18 thousandths. So this direction is, is 18 thousandths greater than this direction. So what that means is this, this diagonal is higher than this diagonal, which means I need to install shims on these locations. How many shims do I need? Well, it's actually very easy. Whatever the indicator is reading, you need that thickness of shims in both corners. So this corner and this corner, I need to install shims between the y-axis rails and the mounting surfaces on the rail mounts. That's where these shims uh, come in handy. These are 0.2 millimeter. If you do the conversion, it's about eight thousandths uh, per shim. These are the thick shims, the coarse adjustment shims. To get to uh, 18 thousandths, you know, I'd need, I'd call it that two shims. So I'm gonna put two shims um, on these corners and that should get me within, you know, call it five to eight thousandths of, uh, of perfect uh, coplanarity. So I'm gonna go ahead and install those and then we'll go ahead and redo this measurement. So I've got the uh, shims installed in this location and this location. I, for my setup, I had to install two shims in, um, along this diagonal. So two shims here, two shims here. I've got the uh, check cage set back up on this diagonal and I've zeroed, the, I've zeroed out the indicator. Now I'm going to pick this up and set it across the other diagonal. Carefully move it over. And it looks like I'm reading exactly five thousandths. So what that means is that these corners here are still about five thousandths lower than this corner, this diagonal. Totally acceptable for this. Um, what we're trying to do is just get the within about ten thousandths of error. That's uh, plenty good enough uh, in advance of the concrete pour. Um, if we, you know, once we have the concrete in there and before we do the base plate, face off the base plate, that's when we want to try to dial this number into like two or three thousandths. If you've uh, if you've done just what I've done and you're getting you got an error that grew. So let's say you started with a twenty thousandths error before shimming and you just put shims in and the error, instead of getting less, it got greater, like up to 40 thousandths, that very likely means that you put the shims in the wrong location. So for example, if, if I had that scenario and I have my shims here and my error grew, I would take the shims out of these locations and I'd put them along the other diagonals and then I would check it again.